Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start this meeting of the uh, SCOP Center Town Hall Forum. Uh, with me tonight from the city is uh, Mayor Bob Denner, uh, City Attorney Jake Howlett, and then on behalf of the SCOP team, I have uh, Jamie Ray Turnbull. And so before we get started, I'd like to make a brief statement real quick uh, to clarify a couple issues that uh, came around from last night. Uh, last night, the city held a town hall on the proposed SCOP Center at 7 p.m. The city understands that only 100 people at a time were allowed to be on this call due to capacity limits in place through our hosting site, Zoom. The city would like to offer a formal apology to all of our residents and interested parties who wanted to join the call but weren't able to due to the participant limit. Uh, the meeting recording from last night can be viewed on the city website under SCOP Center Development. The city would also like to provide additional clarification regarding what happened last night regarding and explain how the city is going to move forward with large meetings virtually. The city did not anticipate having over 100 interested parties who wanted to be involved on the call last night. The city understands there were many residents uh, sending emails and posting on social media about increasing the capacity while the event was ongoing. With the way the Zoom account is set up, it is not possible to modify the number of participants allowed while a meeting is being hosted. The city has been able to identify a solution that allows us up to 500 participants on any Zoom event, and this solution has been purchased and is in effect immediately right now. Uh, the city would also like to ensure those who are unable to participate yesterday, they have no equal opportunity to be heard and provide their comments and questions. And so that's why we're having this session tonight. And I do want to sincerely apologize for those that were unable to um, uh, discuss their comments or questions that I wanted to do everything in our power to provide you the opportunity uh, to feedback to the city and to uh, the SCAP Center team. Uh, before we get started, uh, what I'd like to run over is a couple other ground rules too. Um, you know, we, w there's a, a public comment process uh, where you push, I believe it's star nine, and you're, you'll get a little raise hand function that'll come up. Uh, the assistant to the manager, Smith, will then ask for you to speak. We'll have a three minute timer. And just with the amount of questions and or comments, I would sincerely ask those that were unable to attend tomorrow, uh, I mean yesterday, to please uh, you know, go ahead and make those comments and or questions. Uh, and please clarify those into about one comment or question so we can uh, provide ample opportunity. Uh, we do have an uh, FAQ sheet that's on the city website under SCOP Center Development. This is a living document that uh, is updated every day, including uh, more information provided from last night's meeting. Uh, it's on the SCOP Center development, as well as the recording from last night's meeting. And I'd like to thank you all uh, for participating in this uh, today. For those that were on the call last night, I'm not gonna read through the entire um, questions, but you can view them on the city website. However, I'm gonna ask Assistant and Manager Smith to please put on the screen for everybody to view the last four questions that were updated by the city. And so until that time, I'll allow the mayor to go ahead and make a brief statement until we get those questions up. Okay, thanks, Nick. Um, I'll uh, make essentially the same statement that I made uh, last night. Um, first, I'd like to thank Nick for uh, pushing for and organizing the town hall, uh, number two in this case. Um, he has worked very hard and overall has brought uh, to our city administration best practices that I believe will serve Gross Point Park for many years. I hope that tonight's town hall is productive. Uh, we're here to discuss the proposed SCOP Center. However, I'd first like to provide some context for this project based on my 38 years of living in the park and 17 years of service as a member of council and now as mayor. It has been the vision of previous city leaders to enable the best quality of life possible for our residents. The vision has resulted in many successes brought about by efficient government, generous philanthropists and other sources of revenue such as the tax recapture mechanisms of our DDA on Jefferson and our TIFA for the Northwest sector. The roots of these successes are in the key decisions around 30 years ago of establishing the DDA, the TIFA, and the Gross Point Park Foundation. The results are impressive. The amenities in our parks are second to none. The Northwest sector is no longer a struggling neighborhood, but is thriving. City services are excellent and city finances are well managed. The Jefferson Quarter has been transformed from a crime plague, plagued blighted collection of vacant car dealers, restaurants, a feeling movie theater, and miscellaneous businesses to a pleasant landscape gateway to Gross Point Park with small offices, neighborhood focused businesses, a popular condominium complex, and a public library. 
Rose Point Park is a highly desired address. This is in contrast to when I purchased my home in 1982 and had many try to talk me out of living in what was thought to be a struggling and possibly failing city, at least by them. The one area I left on Jefferson without renewal is the area planned for the Scop Center, including a portion of the site in Detroit that is consistent with the goal of blurring the border with Detroit and Jefferson East goal of revitalization of the Jefferson Quarter. I look forward to continuing the relentless progress of our community. Uh, thanks, and I'll turn it back over to Nick. Uh, thank you, Mayor Denner. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna provide an update of the four questions that we put on the city FAQ. Uh, Leah, from what I see on the screen, can you go down? Uh, the first new question should be, what is the Planning Commission's uh, SCOP Center site plan review process? Uh, keep scrolling. There you go. Okay. Um, per, what is the Planning Commission's SCAP Center site plan review process? Uh, per Gross Point Park zoning code, um, OS1 Office Service District 7D, it states that building elevation drawings and landscape plans shall be submitted for approval and be approved by the Planning Commission and NEL building permits shall require compliance with approved site plans, building elevation drawings, and landscape plans. Uh, the submission requirements to the city include site plan copies to the building official engineer for review. The building official will review the plan to determine compliance with the zoning ordinance and other applicable ordinances and regulations. Uh, copies of the report will be transmitted to the applicant and the planning commission with copies of the site plan. Uh, placement on the Planning Commission agenda, including packets sent to the members of the Commission, including the bu building official and city manager. Uh, one change uh, that has been done from past practice is uh, the city using its, um, we had uh, OHM advisors, who is the city's engineer, uh, provide independent plan review, which is typically something that our building official would do. And we did provide that in the agenda um, that is before the um, Planning Commission meeting tomorrow. Uh, as part of that uh, plan review process, um, my understanding is that the SCAP Center team uh, will be pro uh, showing the public its operating budget um, and a couple other items from its uh, business plan uh, for those in the public that are interested. What is the purpose of site plan review? The purpose of site plan review is to determine if proposals for, of development are in compliance with GPP zoning ordinance and other applicable ordinances and laws. Standards in the zoning ordinance are intended to promote the orderly development of property within the city and to preserve the social and economic stability and viability of the city. The Planning Commission will review the site plan, give consideration to the report submitted from the building official, planner, engineer, and other reviewing authorities, the applicant and the public, although the Planning Commission's charge is to evaluate the suitability of the site plan. A specific question that came out of last night uh, did the city of Detroit look into the parking area that has been proposed at the corner of Alter and Jefferson by the SCAP team, which was the former deck bar? Yes. On July 8, 2019, the city of Gross Point Park City Council passed a memorandum of understanding with the city of Detroit and the URIF. And on July 9th, the Detroit City Council passed this MOU as well. Attached with this MOU included exhibits of the project, including C2, showing the corner of Alter and Jefferson, which included a parking lot. Under Section 3, Activities of the Foundation, which would be the URIF, op C, operate the nonprofit Community Center for the Arts in such a manner that any loading, unloading, or backing up of vehicles in any loading dock that is adjacent to properties located within the boundaries of the City of Detroit occur only within the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Further, vehicle engines shall not idle for more than five minutes in said loading dock area. Uh, last question. What is the city's liability if the SCAP Center cannot sustain itself financially? What is the city's plan if it does fail? Uh, to answer the first question, what is the city's liability if the SCAP Center cannot sustain itself financially? None. All businesses that come to Gross Point Park and other municipalities carry a certain amount of risk. The SCAP Center would be no different, and the Planning Commission will have to consider the zoning requirements of the project, and the council will need to evaluate that risk with the project. If the center were to fail, any financial responsibility for the site would belong to the owners. What is the city's plan if it does fail? The city would review with the board operating the center and or the board after that, the options for the land, including a possible sale and redevelopment. 
The city would retain control over future development of the site if necessary. Uh, thank you for that. And so with that said, I'm going to turn it over to the public comment portion. Um, what we'll do is similar to our city council meetings. We're going to have a three minute timer. Um, and please address your comment, whether it's to the city and tour towards Jamie Ray Turnbull and the SCAP team. And please try and keep your que uh, question or comment to one so we can um, help verify that. And with that said, Leah, can you please admit the first public comment? Um, City Manager Seisland, I also have um, a general question. Do you still want commenters to state their name and their city of residence? Thank you, uh, Leah. Yes, please. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to pull up the timer now. And then, um, Mary, you will be first. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. Thank and if you. you would please go ahead. Good evening. Thank you, Leah. I have a comment and a question. First, I want to kind of follow up on descriptions that remain, that Nick made last night, but that remain in the FAQ. I just looked at it a minute ago about the relationship between Europe and the city. Europe was founded as a 501c3 by three then city employees, including the city manager and mayor. Both the manager and mayor were on the founding board and served for many years, and they were on that board in 2012 when the four parcels were sold to, to SCAP development by the city for $300,000. The city now says in the FAQ and elsewhere that there were various reasons for the sale, and then it was not done, but I have to say it was not done on the open market and it was without an independent appraisal. But more to the point, I'd like to read to you verbatim the council minutes from that sale, which I obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request. And here I'm quoting, city manager stated negotiations have been undertaken for the sale of the property located at Jefferson in Maryland. Dr. Paul Scapp offered $300,000 and will construct a parking lot that will provide public parking that St. Ambrose Church can utilize as well as the proposed municipal improvement. Dr. Scapp stated he decided to acquire the property to preserve the use. If at some point he decides to sell it, the city will have the first right to repurchase the property. He stated he is doing this to maintain a campus-like setting for the site. Mayor Heenan thanked Dr. Scapp and Mr. Lavins for their generous contributions made to the city. And that's the end of the quote. That's the official record of the city about that sale. I just want to make that point clear. I do have a question though for um, either Ms. Turnbull or Nick or the mayor. Um, so Europe was founded in 2012 as a 501c3 public charity. In the eight years it's been in existence, other than the trolley, is there another project that uh, Europe has provided that benefits the general citizenry of Gross Point Park? Thank you. Uh, Bayer Dinner, I'll allow you to take that question, or Jamie Ray. Um, I, can, I can get started, I guess. Um, I do not have in front of me uh, the, uh, uh, the projects that the uh, Urban Renewal Initiative Foundation uh, supported that were directly re uh, supporting uh, Gross Point Park, so I can't really tell you that. Uh, can't, I can't really provide an answer uh, directly. I do know that uh, uh, Urban Renewal Initiative Foundation did provide, uh, has, has provided um, quite a bit of support uh, to um, uh, the uh, area immediately adjacent to Gross Point Park in Detroit, uh, particularly the Merritt Academy. Um, and, uh, but that's, that's really all I uh, am in a, in a position to comment on as uh, in the short time that I was on the board, which came out yesterday as 18 and 19, um, those uh, efforts were not uh, uh, were not current. They may have been ongoing, but they weren't uh, subject to additional discussion. That's all I've got. Jamie, additional comment? I can say that um, as uh, the, those that were on the call previously, I'm the spokesperson for the SCAP Center and URIF, but have been uh, focused 
primarily on the SCOP Center. I um, can also state that the Merit Academy has benefited and those uh, students have benefited from scholarships to um, private schools. Um, and that has been going on for quite some time. There has been a lot of investment from URIF on cleanup of uh, blighted property surrounding uh, Gross Point on the Detroit border. And I don't have the specifics on that, but um, Mary, I'd be happy to give you a full uh, rundown uh, from the board on any other um, commitments that were made previous to the SCOP Center. Yeah, I, I will take you up on that, uh, Jamie Ray, and I appreciate that. I look forward to that information. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question in the queue, Leah. Um, Mr. Kolar, you are next. I see that you have unmuted yourself. Please go ahead. Great. Thank you, Leah. Uh, and this is just a follow-up, uh, Jamie Ray, and for you, City Manager uh, Sizeland. Uh, on the question I asked last night, I don't think we've covered it. I know this is a, a shortened uh, meeting here this evening, but uh, asking about the uh, operating budget and the business plan. I know we tomorrow night we have a meeting uh, with the Planning Commission. I uh, would like to see if there's an update from yesterday if members of the Planning Commission have now been provided uh, that operating budget and the mass and the uh, the plan here uh, for the business going forward. Uh, and if so, when that was given to them today. Thank you. Uh, so I'll answer on behalf of the city and then I'll let I'll turn it over to Jamie Ray. Um, the operating budget and the presentation uh, have not been shared specifically to the Planning Commission members. Uh, this will be shared to the public tomorrow. Uh, Jamie Ray. That is correct. The operating budget um, that has been uh, reviewed in draft format and will be sent over. I know that they have it approved it as to whether or not it has been emailed to uh, the city for um, submission to the Planning Commission. I'm not aware of the timing. Great, and I appreciate that. So just wanna make sure I, I have this fully understood. So we do have an operating budget and we do have a business plan. Tomorrow night, the Planning Commission will be voting on this business plan and this operating budget, but it has not been presented to them yet. So all they will get is a presentation tomorrow I uh, hear you go, ask questions, and then vote. Is that what the plan is for tomorrow night? Uh, so part of the plan of the uh, Planning Commission and what is legally required, uh, Mr. Kolar, is that they actually review zoning requirements and or specifically if there's setback or variances, um, parking. And so uh, as part of GPP's uh, Planning Commission, it is, not a, it is not required to have a business plan, but due to the amount of interest uh, from the community, uh, my understanding is the SCAP Center team will be sharing that as part of their presentation to the Planning Commission. So we, by law, we're going to follow the letter of the law, and I, I appreciate that and understand that here. Um, but given the interest last night, tonight, and for the many months, years that the community has had regarding this, do you not think, City Manager, perhaps even you, Mayor Denner, that it would be a great thing for the city residents, as well as not only the Planning Commission, to see what this operating budget, this business plan looks like. When we're talking about sustainability, you know, all of the 34 questions last night were about lack of transparency and the inability to show the financial viability of this project going forward. That is the biggest concern all residents have. And yet our choice here is to go by the letter of the law of what is the minimum requirements that we should be doing instead of providing good service to our residents. It's very disappointing to me. Thank you. Uh, next question, please, Leah. Um, just a reminder for everyone who's making a comment, even if your name is your screen name, I would ask that you please restate your full name and your city of residence, please. Thank you. Um, the next public comment in the queue is Colin Mulder McComb. Um, I apologize if I said your name incorrectly. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and please go ahead. All right, great. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, we can, can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, Colin Mulder McComb. I am a resident of Gross Point Park. Uh, and I would also like to thank Jamie Ray for coming out again and braving, braving the wolves. 
Uh, last night, Jamie Ray, you were very careful to say that the construction of the Art Center was 100% donor funded. Um, but that's not really all the costs that are going into the construction of the Art Center. We're talking a lot about a lot of hidden costs, like uh, dozens of hours of exorbitant legal fees, uh, environmental inspection, remediation, and pad readiness, an obscene percentage of the DDA's budget year over year, prime real estate that has been removed from our tax rolls and will be removed forever, uh, a, the destruction of the green space in front of Ewald Library, and a staggering amount of public safety overtime. And we might not be funding the center's construction, but we're paying nearly every ancillary cost. At what point, and this is a question for anybody here, at what point do we get to see a full independent and public accounting of the cost that the taxpayers are incurring for the construction of this center? Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Jamie Ray, I'll let you take the first part. Uh, sure, uh, just, I, I mean, I'll, I'll convey it again. The construction costs are 100% um, funded by donors. The ancillary costs are not a uh, hundred percent uh, burden of the city. It's uh, only the items that we have listed in our presentation that will be reiterated again between the agreement between the city and URIF. Um, it is a minimal amount of annual maintenance and uh, services similar to that of the Ewald Library. Um, the, as for the expense of legal fees and pad ready, I'll defer to uh, Nick on that. Um, but uh, let me just state again, the building construction of the uh, SCAP Center is 100% donor funded. Um, thank you. And so Colin, the answer on the city side, um, you know, part of this uh, project, uh, the uh, purchase agreement uh, that was signed by the city did include some city services such as uh, police services, uh, which would be uh, some traffic control uh, there would be um, uh, tree trimming, there would be salting of the parking lot in front of the SCAP Center on the Maryland side, uh, there would be snow removal, and there's also um, uh, some other, I'm looking through my notes here, um, yeah, I did say those, and in, in addition to any other services, uh, there is a, uh, there will have to be a future meeting of the DDA. Uh, that'll have a memorandum of understanding of other um, in-kind services uh, potentially uh, to that. And I would certainly uh, encourage you to please uh, be a part of that meeting and for residents to voice their opinion. So I'll, I'll note that uh, Ewald is a public building. So of course it's getting maintenance, but how much, how much is Ewald costing us per year for upkeep? Uh, so, as part, so as part of that, uh, our DPW um, cuts the lawn um, is there a direct cost to that? No, because that's part of the, uh, uh, part of the DPW employee's uh, assistance of cutting that lawn. Uh, so the same thing would be over at the SCAP Center. Even though it's not a public building? Yes. All right, so, where, so I'll, I'll note again and, that we are paying $75,000 per year from the DDA, uh, an outrageous amount of their annual revenue for one building so what, what other services are being included in this? Uh, I think I hit on all of them uh, for the services for the city. Um, I'd be glad though if there's other um, things that I'm missing. Uh, I'll ask the mayor if there's anything I'm missing in that. Um, and then I'm gonna have to move on Colin to other residents as part of that. All right, thank you. I appreciate your time. Uh, Mayor Denner. Um, I, in terms of uh, operations, operating support, I think you've hit all the operating support uh, between you and Colin and, and uh, mentioning the 75,000 um, that uh, DDA has uh, committed and, and planned for in their budget. Uh, during the construction uh, period, uh, DDA has also pledged to uh, demo the uh, old uh, DPW building and we had an estimate for that uh, that was shared uh, yesterday and in the FAQs and also to uh, construct the parking lot in front of the library. Uh, again, we had a, have a uh, preliminary estimate for that that was also uh, shared in uh, part of the FAQs. That's all Thank that you. comes to mind. Thank you. Okay, ne next question, please, Leo. 
Um, Ame Fluitt, you are next. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. And then if you would please go ahead. Thank you, Leah. Uh, this is Ame Fluitt. I live in Gross Point Park. Um, I actually hadn't planned on asking a question tonight. I was gonna get out of the way for other people, but um, something did just come to mind. And that is um, in our discussion about the DDA, it reminded me that we voted when we passed our city budget to allocate $10,000, an extra $10,000 to the DDA this year in order to help with COVID relief efforts. So um, that has not been done yet. Um, the DDA is operating without bylaws and they have not had a, a meeting recently, I believe not since their budget meeting. And we haven't managed to schedule a meeting to allocate those funds to those businesses that might need assistance. So my question is, why are we so focused on this art center? Why does everything revolve around this art center uh, to the detriment of some of the other issues in this city that need to be addressed yesterday? This art center, there's, there's no rush. The DPW has to be built and relocated before anything can start with the, <coughs> excuse me, before anything can start with the art center. Um, so why has that become priority number one for the city? Uh, thank you. Uh, so what I can answer is that uh, as part of the next DDA meeting, um, we are gonna have a uh, rules regarding meetings uh, we're going to have bylaws and we're also going to have the uh, COVID-19 support program uh, that will establish for businesses uh, seeking support for COVID-related funds of uh, $1,500 per applicant. And are they also going to do the MOU with the URIF? Uh, it depends on the timing of the meeting. Um, I certainly don't anticipate that's going to happen right away. I see that further down the line. Uh, the meeting that I'm suggesting would have probably just those three topics on there. I'm glad to hear that's going to be happening soon. I know you and I had discussed that via email. Um, again, it's a priority. It should have happened a long time ago, but that doesn't answer my question as to why this art center project is front and center and we are in what is apparently a desperate push to get everything approved as quickly as possible. Why is that? Uh, so as part of the process, um, the uh, Urban Renewal or SCOP team submitted their site plan approval, I mean site plan to uh, the city. Uh, the building official reviewed that. Uh, we had our OHM advisors review, uh, plan review, and they checked all the boxes uh, that would require uh, the city planning commission to convene. And that's where we're at in this process. Okay, I don't think that's an answer, but I will move on. Thank you. Uh, next question, please, Leah. Um, City Manager Seisland, I currently don't have any members of the public in queue for commenting. Uh, uh, let's let's give a couple of minutes. I'm sure somebody will have a question or a comment. Uh, let's. Uh, anybody else now? I don't know how to raise my hand. So oh, I heard somebody Ellen. wants to. My name is Ellen Devine. I live in Gross Point Park, and I want to know why in the middle of a pandemic are we talking about constructing an auditorium? I think that we're under some guidelines that we shouldn't meet in groups more than 10. I think that's why we're doing this on the phone tonight. And I don't understand why our focus ought to be on constructing a facility where 400 plus people can sit. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, so as to address your comment, uh, you know, this project, if it were to be approved uh, by planning and move forward, uh, this would probably, construction would end up taking place um, later in 2021. And Jamie, you can um, uh, discuss what the prospect of timeline would be if that was necessary. 
um, upon those approvals. Uh, otherwise, at that time, uh, it is hard to predict whether or not COVID-19 is still going to be a part of our society. Uh, certainly it is now, um, and it is challenges, but we also um, have our due diligence as a city government uh, to provide uh, those services that we provide, including those developers that come to the community uh, with their um, site plans and allowing the government to review. Jamie, Thank any uh, update there? Yeah, yep. just just wanted to add that this has been in the works for um, you know nearly a decade, if not more. And so the timing of the pandemic is most unfortunate. We all hope, um, uh, as a business owner myself, that uh, this um, this changes in the near future, and we are anticipating that uh, the time frame for the construction of the building will start in spring of 21 and complete in uh, 2022. So we have, um, uh, we have time for hopefully this pandemic and what is happening now uh, to correct itself, it, itself. Thank you. Hi, this is- uh, uh, Leah, next question, please. Oh, excuse me, sir. I, I wanna ask Leah, is there a question in the queue? Um, thank you, Manager Sizeland. Yes, I have three. Um, as a reminder to join the queue if you're calling in, there is a star nine that you press on your keypad. It should raise your hand and I can see that your phone number appears in the queue list. If you are using the app, there is a function along the bottom of the screen that should allow you to raise your hand that way. Um, the next person I see in the queue is phone number ending in 7890. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. And it looks like you are unmuted. Please state your name and your city of residence and go ahead. Hi there, thank you, Ms. Smith. This is Cheryl Dunham, and I'm a resident on Pemberton in the Park. And there is significant resident and business support for the project. I've lived here nearly the entire time the URF has been established and family have lived in the area for five generations. This is probably the most positive time and the most well-funded project of our entire five generations and lifetime. The business revenue that we need in this area cannot be established with some of the prior proposals. I lived here when the theater was moving to an X-rated theater. And we picked up syringes as residents on the grass. You could not walk down Jefferson. I support everything Mayor Denner has described. And Nick Seisland, we are blessed and thankful for the leadership of the team. And this disrespect, anger, and hostility from new residents are very progressive residents, this project is going to be widely successful. And I hope you'll welcome this opportunity and move on with the excellent quality of life in our Growth Point Park. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, Leah, next question or comment, please. Okay, um, the next person in the queue is username WW. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. And if you will please state your name and city of residence and go ahead. Hi, good evening. This is Wendy Wardrellen. Um, I spoke last night and I, I was the one who had the questions about the uh, city approvals from the city of Detroit. Um, and just as a follow up to your comments that it was, it was approved with the MOU from July 2019, that is well over a year ago now. Um, what did they base their approval on? Uh, because there were no drawings available at that time. So now we're asking our planning commission to approve drawings that are presented with them, which is exactly how the process goes. Um, why is that not be done, being done with the city of Detroit as well? That's part one of my question. Uh, so I can't speak for the city of Detroit uh, city council meeting uh, where that discussion had took place. Um, but in regards to, I'm sorry, Wendy, can you repeat the second part? My apologies. 
I lost my train of thought. Right. My, my question is, um, they had nothing to, to review at that time. There were no drawings because we were, we were told over and over that there were no, no drawings um, really in existence yet. And now they are prepared and now our planning commission is reviewing them. What, what did the city of Detroit approve at that time? What, what was the basis of their approval? Because they had nothing. My question is the, the parcels that are, are actually the city of Detroit on, on the city of Detroit property that those would apply to the city of Detroit's zoning ordinances and everything. Um, but I, and the way I read the MOU was that they approved the concept of the use, but I don't think they specifically approved a parking lot on the corner of Jefferson and Alter and, and a 58 foot high block wall facing, facing Alter. Okay, uh, thank you for clarifying that. So from my understanding is that uh, as part of that city council meeting, uh, they did have the MOU and it did have exhibits in there. Um, I did actually highlight that too um, in the FAQ uh, towards the bottom, um, which actually does specifically state um, certain aspects of the parking lot, um, including that, um, I mean, yeah, right I recognize that. It, it said something about the yeah. hours of deliveries, possible deliveries. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And were you able to find anything else out about the the historic Jefferson Chalmers Business District and the requirements that go with that? Uh, so I would ask, uh, that, that's more of a question for the uh, SCAP Center team and not for the city since that would require uh, Detroit approval. And uh, And... Okay, uh, along with that, um, can you make those documents available, the additional exhibits that went along with the MOU? Those are not in the documents. And, and the drawings uh, that, know, the, that were included with that at the time. Uh, so as part of the process, um, I do not believe the exact City of Detroit document um, is on our city website um, and or approved. However, what I would ask you to do, if you would like to see those documents and, uh, for fair process for all residents, um, you know, to file a freedom of information act request. Do, do and the we'll planning we'll do it as commissioners and we'll have do to it. do the same? And, and we'll do this as expeditiously as possible to provide those to you. Right. I understand. And, and I appreciate that. I, I know that I'm just looking at it from the letter of the law and, and the rules that apply to this project are the zoning ordinances. And, um, and this is a key ingredient to the zoning ordinances. So I, I would like to see the documents that they base their decision on. And, and if I have to follow no, that, I, I assume that will take a matter of weeks. No, and I understand. And uh, you know, actually I just thought of this as well. Uh, that I know part of the scout, you know, I can't speak, but um, I, I was in a meeting um, just recently uh, that members of the team uh, were talking with Jefferson East and they were talking with um, uh, Josh, Josh Elling and John Stroh about that process and, uh, you know, the border and taking into real consideration of that parking lot. Mm -hmm. And there will be continued uh, communication with Derek Scott. Uh, who is representing Jefferson East, Jefferson Chalmers, and uh, that uh, collaboration will continue. Correct, but they're, yeah. they, they are Jefferson they East. They are, they are not I'm, the governing body that would make any approvals or disapprovals. Yeah. Can, City Manager, can I add a comment? Yes, Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, uh, MOU that's being referred to here, and there's, a, there's an important line here under activities of the foundation. In other words, uh, the, uh, the city of Detroit and Gross Point Park are holding the uh, foundation to the following. The foundation will position and construct the structure slash building that will be the community center for the arts in substantial compliance with the site plan attached as exhibit C. And exhibit C is actually a uh, multiple page uh, document of exhibits where the first one shows an overall site plan, including the layout of the parking lot. The second one shows a view from uh, the Alter uh, Jefferson corner. Uh, the third one uh, is uh, a similar view a little bit further down the street. And then uh, the, the final page uh, re is referring to the, uh, 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 bus, mm -hmm. the bus turnaround. So, so while 
it, it, it may not constitute final building department approval. Uh, this, the, uh, the intent to uh, construct the center according to that site plan was approved by city councils uh, in both cities uh, in July. Okay, and I, I would take that as an agreement to the, to the concept plan because that's all they had at the time. And I'd be interested in seeing those plans because truthfully I've been asking for a few years. And last summer I was asking and I know many people were asking and I was told they didn't exist. So I'm a bit surprised to hear that there were actual plans to review. Thank you. Uh, Leah, next question in the queue, please. Nick, real quick, could I, could I speak real quick? Uh, yes, so the attorney Hollett. Yeah, Wendy, if, if you could send just, even if it's an email, when Nick mentions a FOIA request, that's more for just our documentation. It should not take weeks to get that to you. So if you can identify exactly what it is you're looking for, we'll get that out to you right away. Okay, thank you very much. Yep, no problem, thanks. Okay, uh, Leah, next question or comment, please. Um, Rachel, Sutledge, I, again, apologize if I say your name correct, incorrectly. Um, I see that you have unmuted yourself. Uh, please state your full name and your city of residence and go ahead. Okay, thanks. You said it correctly. Um, Rachel Sutledge, uh, I live in Gross Point Park. I've been in the park now for four years. I've been in the Gross Points for 11. Um, I'm also a member of Gross Point Theater. Um, and, and I want to start by saying that I don't disagree with many of the things that have been said tonight, I do think um, that there has been a lack of transparency in this process. I do think um, that there has been a lack of responsiveness to resident concerns and to community concerns. And that dismays me greatly because I, at heart, very much support this art center. And if this art center is derailed, I think that the incumbent city council members have no one to blame but themselves. And I do not think that this um, art center should be derailed. I think it is incredibly valuable to our community. And I say that not just as a member of Gross Point Theater, but the arts are fundamental to a community and to the vibrancy of a community. Um, I have the unique situation of having lived in another city 15 years ago, which did this exact thing, and it transformed the landscape of the small city that I lived in when they created an art center. Um, I think the potential is tremendous, not just for Gross Point Theater, having a home, not just for Gross Point Symp Symphony, but for many, many other potential residents. I think it has a tremendous potential for our businesses, um, and I do not want to see this process get derailed because it will take a long time to build it and to get it going. And if we want arts in our community, we have to find supporters for our arts and we have that here. We have donors, we have supporters, and we have the ability to create something truly unique and special that will benefit all of Gross Point Park and all of the Gross Points. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leah, next question or comment in the queue. Um, Kevin Rasmussen, you are next. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. Okay, I see that good you are evening. unmuted. Hi. Please go ahead. Yes, good, e good evening. I've uh, heard several times that uh, a four-story brick wall would not be a good look facing Detroit. And I just had an idea, maybe we could change the look a bit, like a facade of windows or something. And that's my comment. Okay, bye. Uh, thank you. I can- uh, uh, Leah, I, Nick, oh, I, go ahead. Nick, if I could just address that um, in a discussion with the design team, it was made clear that it is not a solid brick wall. It is a mixture of materials um, that uh, is aesthetically attractive. It was um, well thought out and uh, the way it is being per uh, perceived as a brick wall on the back of the building is um, not entirely accurate. 
there will be a uh, presentation to Planning Commission uh, with that elevation that will help uh, explain that. Um, and hopefully that helps uh, clear up the um, idea that it is a brick wall solid. Thank you. Uh, Leah, next question or comment? Um, Rose T, you are next. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. And if you can hi. please state your full name and city of residence. Yes, hi, uh, Rose Tokotlian. Um, uh, I'm a resident of Gross Point Park. And um, I wanted to just ask, you know, I, I know this is, so first of all, I want, I, I want, I want to, um, just state that I am a huge supporter of the arts. I believe in the arts. Um, I have volunteered at the Michigan Opera Theater, played in multiple instruments throughout my lifetime. Um, and so I see great value in, um, in this facility. Um, like others have stated, I'm super concerned about the lack of transparency. I'm even more concerned now about the, the timing of this, um, especially with you know, um, this pandemic that we're dealing with, which we really don't know what's going to happen. And obviously it continues to worsen. Um, and in addition to that, one of the things that, that, that I don't think I've heard yet was consideration for um, possibly reuse of an, of an existing building. And that would be Trombley. Um, I, you know, I know that we have a plan here that's been, well thought out um, for a um, uh, for a space, uh, you know, where all the land's been accumulated, um, but perhaps maybe there's something else that could be put there. And, um, you know, the real beauty would be, particularly for those of us who live below Jefferson, is, you know, saving Trombley and not having it um, look like it does today. Um, you know, I, I really am disappointed at, at you know, the, late, the way the, the, the grounds look and things like that. Um, and it's only a matter of time before that starts to impact um, our, our home values, which will impact, um, you know, again, um, you know, if, if we decide to move and the amount of taxes that can be generated um, down the road, um, things like that. So I'm wondering if, um, you know, if, if any of that has been considered um, and perhaps maybe a joint um, type of a program for early childhood um, um, programming um, along with um, theater. Nick, if it's all right, I will uh, take that two questions um, in regard to the pandemic. I want to point out that when this is completed um, and during this process, uh, this is going to create jobs, uh, architects, engineers, consultants, building trades, and uh, this is exactly what we need coming post pandemic. Um, additional revenue to the businesses, which I think everyone knows is going to uh, generate uh, strong uh, traffic to the surrounding businesses. So that in regard to the pandemic. Secondarily, I really um, uh, like the idea of activating Tromley in some meaningful way. I also live south of Jefferson um, and uh, our family are huge supporters uh, and attendees from the Trombley School. And there are some ideas that have been um, percolating in regard to activating in some meaningful way, a community arts program at Trombley. Um, we need to get through this critical uh, point in the process before we can uh, dive further into the philanthropic dollars of our community to do these types of programs. So I like the idea. I think that our donors are enthusiastic about finding ways um, to activate and keep Trombley um, uh, uh, going in some meaningful way. So thank you for that uh, comment. Thank, thank you. I'd also like to follow up. Um, I have experience, personal experience with this with uh, repurposing a school, um, which would have been vacated uh, vacant for eight years. And it went from being um, a strain on um, the local community um, to be rep to being, you know, revenue generating. So you know, I'd, I'd be happy to share some of the things that we did and, you know, our process to be able to reuse that space um, in a meaningful way. It's certainly not quite, you know, obviously it was, um, it became a nonprofit incubator, the program that I worked with. Um, so it was a little bit different than what we're doing here, but it's, it's the same kind of concept where um, the neighbors were so thrilled 
when we moved in and and literally you know it took a it took a, a, a community eyesore and turned it into um something that had life and, and vibrancy to it and you know I, I i'm very concerned about the fact that trombley is you know is is closing and that there's no um there's no real plan um beyond um you know squeezing more kids into a smaller space so um when that actually happens so that I appreciate you all taking the time to um, to listen to my feedback and uh, for your response. Thank you. Thank you. And Rose, I, I encourage you to talk to Dr. Niehaus. And if you'd like to uh, reach out to me, my email is jrt at jrturnbull.com. Uh, we have others in the community that would like to see things happen uh, differently there too. And sure. engage you in that process. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Leah, next question or comment, please. Okay, um, just a reminder, since we're getting a little low on comments again, um, if you have not spoken yet and you have a comment that you would like to make, um, you can either press star nine on your phone's keypad and that will raise your hand or there is a raise hand function on the bottom of your screen if you're utilizing the Zoom application. Um, the next person on the queue list is Dr. Greer. If you would please unmute yourself, state your full name and your city of residence, and go ahead. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Greer. I live on Westchester in Gross Point Park. Um, thanks for having this forum tonight. I sure wish um, that other residents could have had more notice about it. Um, I'm what caller Cheryl would call a new resident. I've been here in the park for seven years. I'm a progressive, and I'm proud of that. Um, I also want to let um, let you know that I'm not going away and I won't be bullied out of speaking up for my community because I haven't lived here as long as others have. Um, I also think it's important for you to know that I love art. I'm a published poet and a musician and I'm married to a painter. Um, but I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about transparency in government. Um, I think everyone on this call can agree that part of the job of the mayor is to communicate with citizens and make sure that our needs are being met and that our preferences are reflected in the long-term planning of the city and the day-to-day -day work that the city does. Um, would you please help me understand how this project has been in the works for 10 years and we failed to have a proper legal public forum? Um, in fact, from Mayor Denner's comments here tonight, it seems as if he's been concealing key information about this project as citizens have been asking about it. So, Mayor Denner, are you afraid of citizen input on this project? Why have you been hiding this information from us for so long? And I'd like you to explain to me why you think your secrecy about this project has been good for the city and good for the residents. Uh, one thing, uh, Mr. Greer, before the mayor is allowed to respond, I would like to remind, please direct your comments and your questions to the city and or to uh, Jamie Ray Turnbull and not to other residents that are on this forum. Mayor Denner. Uh, Dr. Greer, uh, you are correct that this is this concept has been out there for a long time. Um, I would uh, disagree with you about hiding uh, the fact that it's uh, been being worked on. I think it's it's gotten quite a bit of uh, publicity over the years uh, going back uh, many, many years uh, with a Gross Point News article. Um, it takes a long time for projects like this to develop. And so uh, from time to time, it hits uh, key inflection points uh, where the next step is taken. And uh, in those cases, uh, it came for uh, the appropriate body and, uh, and votes were taken and, and uh, uh, progress was made. So I would disagree that things have been hidden it's more a case of the pace of a project such as such as this. Um, you uh, you develop it uh, uh, a step at a time, and uh, and communicate with uh, with people as as you go. Um, that's really uh, all I have to say on that. Thank you. So can I? May I ask a follow Thank up, you. please? I'll be brief. One follow up. Yep. Okay. So um, it appears that it appears that architectural drawings and plans have been in place. Um, has there been any official gathering of feedback and preferences from the public about what the building should look like, how it should function, how it should work, how accessible it should be, um, that I'm not aware of? 
that have happened to give, provide input into the, this, these architectural plans? Uh, Jamie Ray, would you like to speak on that? Um, this is really a city decision, but it is a private entity. And, um, you know, the input as far as the architectural design, uh, really that's what the planning commission is for, uh, to review site plan, architectural plan, uh, zoning. Uh, that's not up for the residents to uh, make that determination. All right. As a, thank you. Thank you, Jamie Ray. I think I know. I think I know where residents stand on this project based on your feedback. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, next question or comment, please, Leah. I'm Tom Woodman. You are next in the queue. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please, and state your full name and your city of residence. Thank you, Leah. Tom Woodman, Gross Point Park. Uh, in the Tiffin district actually 20 years. Um, just a quick comment on the timing. Uh, these are massive projects. It's gonna be two year minimum before completion. Uh, with luck, you know, God willing, we're, we're gonna have a handle on the pandemic and a, and a vaccine by then. And our local area businesses will certainly need help getting back on their feet. Our, our local bars and restaurants, which will be hurt hard uh, for the next two years, I'm gonna guess. Uh, Studies suggest that between $17 and $24 uh, per patron, per visit on average, are spent in local area uh, bars and restaurants for drinks, uh, drinks, dining, and uh, dessert after a, after a show. Uh, you know, even, even using conservative estimates of what Gross Point Theater has done in the past, uh, plus a little bit of extra uh, programming by, uh, by the Art Center would put that, uh, if you do the math, upwards of $500,000. And that's money to area businesses. That is not money uh, for ticket sales. That's over and above ticket sales. Um, so, you know, if we want that benefit in two and a half years, and I'm gonna bet that the local businesses do want that, then we have to get started now. Uh, so, I mean, I don't think this is really bad timing. Uh, it's unfortunate that we, I guess, that we have to talk about something other than the pandemic, but that's just is what it is. Um, a second, a question uh, for uh, Jamie Ray, if you could please clarify. It's my interpretation from looking at the plans that rather than looking at a full brick wall, what's actually going to be happening is people are going to be looking at a landscape parking lot from the Detroit, Detroit side, a landscape parking lot, and only a partially visible uh, brick wall. And in fact, the, most of the brick wall is actually facing the apartment building. The apartment building, which right now faces actually the DPW building, which if you've been over in that corner is not really very attractive. So I'm reasonably certain that our resident, that, uh, that the Detroiters living in that apartment building are going to prefer uh, their view uh, over what they have right now. So could you just please clarify for me, is that in fact the case that it will be a landscaped parking lot with one of those short fence things, short wall things, and then that the wall is only partially visible, please. Yes, that is correct. Um, it is a landscape with screening uh, and uh, you all are also correct. Uh, I have spoken with the apartment owner of that building. They are thrilled uh, about the improvement to that area and um, they look forward to seeing the plans uh, when presented at Planning Commission as well um, to see how that is going to impact their uh, resident experience. And um, that is only a portion of the backside of the building that is visible because of the current location of the uh, uh, apartment building. And um, that would be uh, my answer there. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Uh, next question or comment? Um, Liz Habercorn, you are next. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and state your full name and city of residence, please. Hi, sorry, this is David Haberkorn. Bill, my wife's here too. Um, I live on Harvard and Gross Point Park. I just wanted to follow up about a earlier caller's points about Trombley Elementary School being vacant. So I'm, I'm honestly surprised the city hasn't been discussing this more. Um, I think the URF, it seems like your comments alluded to the fact that discussions are 
have, are underway or have been underway into utilizing Trombley for a, a community type building. Um, I'm curious if you could go into more details on like what the discussions have included. Um, and then I'm also interested in the, the city's point of view on hearing what they've been doing to work with the school system to figure out a plan for Trombley. Um, I think one, I, I do like that the proposed art center is using a space that's been empty and dilapidated for a long time. But what I struggle with, especially with Trombley being empty right now, is that most of the space is going towards building another auditorium. And right now we already have a vacant auditorium within city limits. Um, I think what the city really needs is more community amenities and services. Um, so I just, I wonder why we're rushing into this to build another auditorium within the city um, without fully vetting other options with Trombley Elementary School. So I can- uh, So I'll speak first, uh, Jamie, I'll speak first on behalf of the city. So uh, uh, thank you for that question and comment. Uh, you know, since the first announcement came with the possible closures of the schools, it was of the extreme interest of the city council in the city uh, you know, they, um, they actually did end up passing a resolution as well. Um, you know, they were not in favor of closing those schools. And at that time, uh, Mayor Denner as well has created a special ad hoc committee of the city council, um, uh, including a couple of members of council, council member Reed and Hodges, along with one of our planning commission members, Michelle Lindsay, uh, who have really been working hard, uh, working with uh, Dr. Niehaus and other representatives of the school. Um, really to see, you know, what we can do, including there were earlier proposals um, and discussions about the early childhood education. And I know in the interest of the city and our ad hoc committee, we certainly want to see a thriving Trombley. Um, and so that's my aspect on the city and I'll turn over the rest to Jamie Ray. Thank you. In regard to activating uh, Trombley as a potential uh, community center for the um, local arts community. This has just been a new idea. It has not been vetted with the school board. There have been uh, several residents that have approached um, us to discuss that and it is worthy of a discussion. So having said that, why, if, it's, if everyone's saying it's worthy of a discussion and there's a special committee in place, then why do we find ourselves here on what like six hours notice having another meeting before the planning commission meets tomorrow why why is it so rushed if there's still other options on the table that it seems everyone's interested in so the option isn't to uh retrofit trombley as a replacement for the scap center the scap center as it's proposed uh at its location that's being reviewed tomorrow uh is the plan that there is not a concept of retrofitting for the SCAP Center as taking over Trombley. Um, so I want to make that clear. The, uh, the idea was, is there a way that uh, through the Council for the Arts, or the Arts Council, could there be any support of some type of activation for a local artist? And that is where there has been discussion and I welcome you to reach out to me uh, and any other member that's on the call of the uh, community that wants to talk about those potential opportunities and we would welcome uh, further input on that. I'm also interested in the city's take on this. Why isn't, aren't city representatives exploring this as if, like it should be in the best interest of the city if we have an auditorium and it fits a use case for part of this arts center, why don't we utilize Trombley for that and continue a more detailed discussion on what else can be done. Uh, and so I, I understand, and, and, you know, part of the challenge um, that we have is that, uh, you know, certainly at this time, the school owns the building, uh, really that, you know, for any other development to happen obviously requires a uh, city zoning. Uh, so that certainly comes into play. And otherwise, uh, the developers of the um, SCAP Center, uh, they certainly are interested in um, utilizing that space so it's not seen as um, something that's empty and creating a program as Jamie Ray stated. Thank you. 
Uh, Leah, next question or comment, please. I'm City Manager Seidland. Um I don't have any new comments in the queue. I do have um, two people who have made comment before. I'd like to go ahead and give them the opportunity to speak again. So um, that might give other participants more time to think about questions they may want to ask that have not been asked yet. So I'm just going to repeat the process again. Star nine to raise your hand on the phone and then you can use the raise hand function in the application. Um, Colin McComb, you are up next. Again, you, please unmute yourself and state, well, I guess you don't need to state your name in your well, city of I'm, residence again, but please go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm actually speaking on behalf of another park resident, Jessica Dunn, who is also a park resident. Uh, and what she says, she's having, she's having tech issues and rocking her baby to sleep. So shout out for Agatha. Um, so uh, she says, I'm a career arts administrator and as someone who, that also works for a municipality, I have a huge issue with the lack of transparency here. I am die hard for the arts and communities, but I want it done right and I'm not convinced this is right. And she has a further follow up, which is aside from the library, what other businesses and organizations is the city investing significant annual funds in addition to office space? Is it only the library? If no other businesses, why this one? Uh, so, can you restate, so are you talking about city services or are you talking about direct funds, Colin? Uh, either. Okay, thank you. But, but um, um, or, I mean, let's, let's, let's focus first on the city services uh, and then the other direct funds, if we can separate those out. Okay, I'll do my best. So, uh, you know, as you know, um, our city DPW department, uh, we plow the streets um, and we go down Kerchival in Charlevoix and those business districts and help uh, plow uh, those streets over there. Uh, we do uh, weed whipping around the area and we also have landscapers in front of those businesses. Uh, we do mow the lawns and especially those right of ways that are right near those businesses. And we do mow the lawn in front of the um, uh, library. Uh, and so those are the city services we provide. So lawn and snow removal um, and any other uh, city funds used for anything. Uh, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is that uh, there is a, there was a cur there is an agreement I believe right now uh, between the city and uh, the Charlevoix, which is a business over on Charlevoix that was discussed by the former uh, TIFA director that helped in sharing a parking space that is used um, actually owned by the church. Um. Nick, I can add to that a little bit. Please do. Um, the, in, in terms of support to, uh, uh, to businesses, um, both the TIFA and the DDA are charged with uh, using their tax uh, recapture for the benefit of their districts. In the case of the DDA, um, that is, uh, does have a lot of uh, business focus. So um, the uh, landscaping that the DDA does uh, in that area is an example of that. Uh, the TIFA, which is a much larger uh, entity in terms of tax recapture, uh, has a responsibility to spend that tax recapture for the benefit of the whole district, uh, which includes both residential and business. And uh, there are examples of that uh, uh, as it relates to business, including uh, uh, parking enhancements, the, rec the recent program for, uh, for COVID support, and over the years, uh, a, number of, a number of other uh, programs. I think there was a facade program uh, some years back. So the idea that uh, uh, TIFA and DDA, as part of their mission, um, uh, do provide support to, uh, to businesses. Yeah. So that's sidewalks. Part of that as well. That's, that's, that's sidewalks and streets, et cetera. I mean, aren't those all technically owned by the city and they just happen to be in front of a business? I mean, aren't the benefits to those, those buildings above and beyond what other businesses receive? Colin, can you repeat yourself? You cut out a little, sorry. Yeah, aren't the, aren't the benefits to the SCOP Center above and beyond what the other businesses receive? I don't think I can comment on that. Um, uh, Colin? Yeah, did. I mean, so what? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. I guess the uh, the nature of the, the specific nature of the question. So, so the Scott Center is receiving additional benefits above what the these other businesses receive, correct? 
Well, they're receiving different benefits. Additional above is is not the term that I would use, so it's it's uh, somewhat different. Um, and all I right. think those are all documented. Those, those things that the that uh, the city and the uh, and the DDA um, are providing or have provided are all documented in the FAQs. Um, and in documents, so that's uh, that's nothing new. And well. the um, uh, and as I said, that there are a number of programs over the years, um, uh, past and, and present, um, in TIF and DDA, which have benefited businesses. Thank right. you. Well, uh, and and once again, I would just like to call for an independent uh, accounting of the costs to taxpayers. Uh, that is really all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leah, next question or comment, please. I'm username Ellen's girl. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. Hi, my name is Ellen Devine. I spoke earlier and thank you for recognizing me again. Um, I've been a Gross Point Park resident for more than 30 years and in that time, I've watched this um, strange, I have to think of it as a braid, you know, one hand over the other and the other hand over the other. And it's been the bus turnaround, Joe's Garage, and the relocation of the DPW. And all of them seem to be uh, just moving in this braided kind of way to the idea of an art center on Jefferson. And I really have to say, in support of this discussion today, when I've seen conversation about the bus turnaround and Joe's garage and the relocation of the DPW, they've sort of been presented as a done deed this is going to happen. And I think it speaks to the lack of transparency in this community. And this is the first time in 30 years that there seems to be just a tiny bit of interest in community input and a desire to do what the community wants. And, and, and I have to recognize and applaud that interest in transparency and I hope that it continues. And I want to ask, what's the capacity of the Trombley Auditorium? Um, so I'll answer on behalf of the city and so I, I do appreciate your comments. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, this is something I'm certainly striving so, uh, for with the city. Well, we had a previous city manager, Dale Craniac, that worked for the city for about 30 years. Um, I am, I have now reached about my year uh, with this, almost with the city. Uh, and one of the things I really would like to do, and I appreciate that, and I always encourage feedback from residents back and forth and what we can do to improve our community. Um, you know, please attend these meetings as you're doing right now, attend city council, TIFA, DDA. Uh, Pre-COVID, I had outreach meetings, um, and I definitely would like to start that back up again. Um, you know, hearing the feedback from you of what we can do to provide more transparency uh, to the community and what is your best interest. Um, you know, so we're certainly doing the best uh, that we can. We're going to continue uh, to strive for that, and I, I uh, thank you for that. Uh, otherwise, the exact amount of Trombley Auditorium space, I do not have the number off the top of my head. I'll allow the mayor or Jamie Ray, if they know that off the top of their head? I do not. Um, I do not know what the capacity is. Um, I will say the, uh, some of the discussion that, that has occurred uh, tonight uh, related to Trombley, um, there, seem to be, there seems to be a disconnect on one point, and that's the, the notion that the uh, Trombley Auditorium could be repurposed to be a world-class uh, performance center. Um, and I don't think that that's given the limitations of the building, uh, the lack of uh, wing space, fly space, and so on for performances, uh, acoustics issues, that uh, repurposing the auditorium for, um, for the kind of quality performances that uh, the Scott Center is shooting for is gonna be practical. Uh, having said that, uh, the other parts of the discussion that we've heard tonight uh, have indicated considerable interest both uh, on the part of uh, 
of the city and on the philanthropists uh, associated with the Scott Center in, um, in, in working with the schools, school board on uh, creative solutions to make sure that uh, Trombley, the, the building is, uh, uh, is revitalized in a meaningful way, is, is used in a meaningful way. Um, and uh, there have been discussions, for example, about the early childhood program. Uh, we're still hopeful, I'm still hopeful that that will bear some fruit. Uh, there's recent discussions really over the last just several weeks about uh, extending the, uh, uh, the reach of the philanthropists interested in the arts uh, to support uh, the development of some uh, art ed education and, and programs for the arts uh, based at Trombley. And that portion of it I would see as supplemental or uh, in addition to um, the, uh, uh, the kind of uh, performance space that's anticipated at the Scott Center. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Leah, next question or comment. The username is non, N-A-N. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. And please state your full name and city of residence and go ahead. I am a resident of Gross Point Park uh, for about the last 20 years. My grandfather built a house on Belfour in the 20s. So uh, we go back quite a ways. Um, Nancy Cameron Wildern is my full name. Um, I have been a professional uh, in the theater arts since 1974. And I think the idea of a art center is very exciting. I think that you're, you're going to find, and I have been an administrator um, as well as a director and a teacher uh, at a professional theater and um, I'm going to say that your general age audience is going to be 40s to 70s. So that's going to be great for the symphony and the Rose Point Theater. But um, I do think that um, you need to think about all the children and all the young people in this area and how they can be engaged. And I have not seen a mission statement. There has not been a theater I've been involved with ever that did not have a mission statement. So I think that if this is going to be open to these two venues only, we're missing a lot in terms of the arts and um, the, you know, just the ways that we can do theater workshops, theater camps, art camps, uh, opening the gallery. In my, in my understanding, this is only going to be open when there are performances for the symphony or the theater, I think that's way underused. I think we're rushing into this without really knowing what this is about and how we are going to be, be able to relate to it as a community. And so I guess one of my questions, my big question is, why are we rushing into this? My second comment would be that I think what you're hearing in all of this feedback and all of this interest that's been generated is that we want to be more informed. We want to be involved. And I have been to many, many council meetings. And uh, I think you're gonna see that this is a different Gross Point Park than maybe was back with Heenan. Yes, we all love the things that we can get from this. Yes, we want to be more involved. Yes, we want to be more informed. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Nick, if I could go ahead and take this in regard to the um, programming for youth. Uh, the reason why we need this facility is because both the Gross Point Theater and the Gross Point Symphony Orchestra are without a home. And they have provided decades in historical uh, community uh, performances for a very long time in a very successful and meaningful way. Some of the programs that the Gross Point uh, Theater uh, hosts are geared toward youth, youth on stage, youth acting classes and summer camps. Uh, we have a youth technical theater program added to train students, 85,000 in scholarships to over 88 students in the past four decades, helping students fulfill their dreams of continuing their theater, theatrical education. Uh, free workshops for the community, including pre-audition workshops for vocal and dance, 
and sponsored summer campers uh, for the Bull Family YMCA in Detroit last June. This is just to name the programs within the Gross Point Theater. The Gross Point Symphony Orchestra also has the Thomas Nestor Scholarship uh, that uh, fosters talented young performers as well. So those are just two of the many organizations that have shown interest in the SCOP Center. And as we get into the programming of the building, in addition to the performing part of the uh, programming, the visual arts has great opportunity with the community exhibit and the rotating exhibit lobby space. So I would welcome input as a representative of the SCAP Center to anybody that would like to talk with me about uh, how more organizations can get involved so that we can expand that uh, base of uh, supporters to those organizations and the many others that have shown interest in this project. Thank you. Leah, next question or comment? Okay, um, Mr. Edward Keelan, you are next on my queue list. I'm going to ask you to state your full name and your address and go ahead. Well, city of residence and go ahead, please. Actually, this is uh, Chris Keelan. I'm Edward's wife. We have lived in Gross Point Park for 30 plus years. My question is mostly a point of clarification. We were lucky enough to be on the call last night, and I believe that we heard that the contract or agreement between the city and URIF about the property is open-ended, as in if they don't raise, there's no deadline to raise the 25 million to start the construction. So in theory, my understanding based on that would be in theory that that property could still sit vacant for many, many years without anybody developing it and the SCAP Foundation or URIF having uh, a hold on the property. Is that correct? Uh, so there is a, it, it is in a purchase agreement that was approved by city council uh, stating it, uh, in there that sufficient funding once that has taken place by the SCOP Center team that yes, the city would then convey the properties which are two parcels of DPW which half of it is in Detroit, half of it is in Gross Point Park and the two parcels that are over at the deck bar location, a uh, former deck bar location on Alter and Jefferson. And I would like to also add that of the $25 million construction budget for capital expenses to build, there is $16 million that has already been committed. And that once uh, Planning Commission has reviewed the site uh, plan, the fundraising will resume full force. So at this point, who, who owns the property? Does the city still own it? or does URIF own it? The city owns the property at this point right now. Uh, so can, I can I clarify that, Nick? Make sure that we're talking about the same property. The property that we're discussing that gets transferred when the uh, uh, fundraising is, is adequate to, to build it is the property that the city currently owns, which is the DPW, current DPW site and the uh, uh, the property near the corner of Jefferson and Alter. Uh, the rest of the property that's uh, in the site plan is already owned by uh, Urban Renewal and the, SCOP, and the SCOPs. That's correct. So there's a bit of property that the city owns that could just sit there vacant until URIF makes their 25 million goal. Yes. Great. Well, if I could address that real quick, Nick, can you hear me? Yes, uh, go ahead, Jake. It, it wouldn't sit vacant forever. There's always a reasonable um, standard applied to an agreement with a timeline like that. 
And uh, it, it is certainly something that's under review and consideration uh, for the timeline on how long and how open-ended that would be. But it, it is not something concerning to me as the city attorney that it would be an interminable deadline that the property would sit vacant forever awaiting that fundraising deadline. I don't think anybody is concerned uh, the fundraising won't reach its goal, but no, we would have options uh, to move forward if it seemed like that was not going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Hallett. Thank you. Uh, next comment or question. Okay, um, I just want to remind everyone again that if you have not yet asked a question or you would like to make a comment, um, star nine on your phone's keypad or use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen if you're using the Zoom application. Martha Schroeder, you are next in my queue. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. And please state your name, city of residence, and go ahead. Um, Martha, can you try speaking to me again, please? Okay, let's move on to the next resident and then we'll try again if she wants to ask. Okay, um, Mary Ralu, you are next. I'm going to ask you to please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Leah. I, uh, Mary Rulo, I live in Gross Point Park. Just want to do a follow up comment um, based on some of the other commentary about en engagement by our citizens and being involved. And Nick, you responded that you really welcome that. And I'm glad to hear that. But I have to say this, and we've had this discussion a lot, but for the benefit of those uh, on this Zoom who, are not, not as, who have not been as um, involved with some of the processes, it's very hard. I have a long record uh, of citizen engagement. It's very hard to get people involved when they don't have notice, proper notice. And I'm not talking about the bare minimum standards of the Open Meetings Act in Michigan, which is ranked among one of the poorest in the country. But that, always, that seems to be the fallback position when, when the city gets challenged about why we haven't gotten more notice of meetings or of information. Oh, well, we're, we're meeting OMA requirements. Well, that's really unacceptable if you truly want citizen engagement. There was a small um, improvement recently when the council adopted its new standards for it's meetings, but only by about a day. So I guess I would say to you, Nick, and to Mayor Denner, and to the members of the council who are um, observing this meeting, if you really want us engaged, then we need to get proper notice. And frankly, there's a whole citizen engagement process. There are many processes that exist out there, some of which have been demonstrated right across our border uh, during the Jeff Chalmers visioning process that are out there that Gross Point Park can easily do at scale so that you get, our, you get our input and our engagement on the front end, not at this point in a project where the architecture is basically all baked in. So I'm glad to hear that you welcome it, Nick. And you know, I really believe that you do, but you have to step back and look at these processes and look at the timing and make sure that we are giving adequate information with adequate time to review it and not just fall back on you know, an interpretation of, by our council of OMA requirements. So thank you. Uh, no, and I do appreciate that, Mary. Um, I'll, I'll make two quick references. One of them that, uh, you know, it, it was unfortunate. It was a mistake on my part. Um, you know, we had our session yesterday. We reached our 100-person limit, and I know it was, it was an extremely short notice for those, but I felt compelled uh, to really provide more opportunity uh, for those residents that, um, you know, were not able to provide their comments and questions, and uh, it, it was I felt that I, I had to do something. I know it was so short, but I really wanted to improve that process. Um, and so that's why I did that. Uh, in regards to our neighbors, uh, one of the things I'm most excited about, uh, and we really emphasized in our master plan uh, RFP that went out uh, to vendors is uh, community engagement. Um, obviously with COVID, uh, you know, this is something that it's a little different with how are we gonna handle community engagement with the master plan. Um, that will be discussed at the uh, city council meeting. Uh, and one of those, I, I really do look forward, especially seeing what our um, 
you know, neighbors have done and the proposals that are forth. And I encourage you, and I know you'll be excited as well, um, and I encourage the residents uh, to certainly be a part of that uh, process. And Nick, if I could just quickly follow up. This also, you know, it extends to council meetings, to TIFA meetings, to DDA. That, you know, we need to have better notice and better information and materials for all those uh, commissions if you really want our involvement. Thank you. All right, we'll continue. Thank you. Uh, next question or comment. Um, Tim Kolar, you are next in my queue. I see that you have unmuted yourself. Um, please, just for the sake of the process, state your full name and city of residence and go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Lee. And I appreciate you calling me again and giving me the opportunity to speak uh, once again. Wasn't planning on it, but I, I wanted to respond to one of the comments that uh, Jamie Ray had just made a second ago and then leave with a question here. Uh, Tim Kohler, uh, the 1000 block uh, of Berkshire Road, uh, been in Gross Point Park for only three years. So take that for, for what it's worth. The $16 million number uh, that was just referenced, um, I just wanna make sure that my fellow neighbors are, are not gonna be misled there based on uh, the comment that that was uh, aggressive fundraising that's taken place thus far. You know, I recall back in October of 2019 uh, with the prior city council just prior to the election, you know, the reason that the conveyance of the land at the time and uh, the, the Joe's Garage transaction was being transacted uh, to quote the mayor was, so fundraising could begin in earnest. It's August of 2020, and we have had no further fundraising performed other than the commitments that have been given by, and these are wonderful commitments, by the way, you know, by the Scott family uh, and the Manugians, as well as the $1 million anonymous donor. And so I just want to make sure that my fellow citizens realize that, you know, the plan and statements in October of 2019 that uh, fundraising was to begin in earnest uh, has not materialized. And so that's why a lot of the questions I, I appreciate as far as how long do we let this go on? You know, this land has been controlled by SCOP development for many years. This obviously has been an intentional and purposeful plan by many years, if not decades by the city to vacate this property and land for this development here. And so it's just something that I wanna make sure that we understand as my fellow neighbors that fundraising is still something that I know Jamie Ray will respond as far as the actions and everything that will be taking place after approval tomorrow night. But before approval tomorrow night, my question here, you know, these last two nights have been great. I appreciate this. Of course, we can all say that we wish this would have happened months, if not well over a year ago, uh, and would have been continuous throughout this entire process here. But what, if anything, uh, and this is probably for URIF, but of course the city, you can respond as well. What is gonna be done with any of this feedback? Is, is this just gonna be something where we're gonna have the box check to say, and we can point back in time when we, when we revisit this, that we have taken community feedback or are there actually gonna be actionable items? Are we gonna see perhaps a shift in community programming at the venue uh, you know, or something else that may be able to be pointed to that says, hey, as a result of these public forums, as a result of the feedback from the community, this was a result of those conversations. I'd be interested to hear your answers. And again, thank you for your time. I'll go ahead and take that. Thank you. Um, first, I, I want to go ahead and read to everybody the list of the SCAP Center presentations that have taken place thus far. July 8th, Gross Point Rotary. July 13th, Gross Point, City Park, er, Gross Point Park City Council. July 16th, the Gross Point Chamber of Com Commerce, Session 1. July 16th, Chamber of Commerce, Session 2. July 20th, Gross Point Theater, Session 1. July 21st, Gross Point Theater Session 2. July 27th, the Gross Point Board of Realtors. August 4th, Jefferson East. August 10th, City of Gross Point Park Town Hall. August 11th, today, another town hall. And we will be presenting to uh, the Gross Point Sunrise uh, Rotary, as well as the Gross Point Symphony Orchestra on the 18th and the 19th. I think what we have found through each one of those presentations and the emails that I have personally received, uh, the calls that I have received and the feedback that I have received um, as a new uh, spokesperson and team member starting June 1st, um, I would hope that you all have uh, felt that I have been responsive, that I have uh, uh, conveyed the messages and ideas uh, to the team, not only at the city, but also to uh, the members of the board of uh, URIF and uh, leadership at the SCAP Center. 
Uh, I take my role as spokesperson and a resident myself of Grosse Point Park very seriously. I'm a realtor in Grosse Point. I have a lot of um, uh, at stake in this community from a reputation standpoint. And I am very confident uh, that I feel very proud about being on this team. And I like the direction that the city is taking going forward as far as transparency and I hope that it continues. I don't see that it will change in any way uh, to the negative, but only to the positive. And I would hope that the members of the community that have been on the calls, uh, because many of you have been on a lot of these calls already, uh, will see that there is a theme of um, uh, responsiveness that has happened over the last couple of months. What has happened in the past over the past few years, I can't answer to, but I am certainly willing to help in any way, shape or form uh, to bridge the um, communication gap that you all have seen and uh, would welcome any other feedback and hope that you see uh, my participation and the leadership at the SCOP Center uh, to be a going in the positive direction. And, and Tim, to relay uh, similar on, uh, from the city side, uh, I do know that as part of these processes, uh, especially since Jamie Ray has been on board, uh, she's been very responsive to city administration regarding any elected officials that have uh, questions regarding the SCAP Center, including those on the Planning Commission and residents. Um, and, and so that's been a really welcoming process. And I do encourage that uh, we do have our Planning Commission meeting tomorrow and further meetings uh, that will be taking place uh, where we'll be hearing your feedback. And I think from these have been really constructive and we'll continue that dialogue moving forward. Uh, Leah, next question or comment, please. Okay, um, I see that Martha Schroeder has rejoined the queue, so I see that you are unmuted. Can you try speaking for me again, please? Good evening, Ms. Leah. Can you hear me? It's Dick Schroeder. I can. Um, can you also state your city of residence, please, and go ahead? Yes, uh, Girls Point Park, Michigan. Um, I live south of Jefferson, and I think I can... Um, tell you about Trombley's Auditorium. I think it holds around 150 11 year olds. Adults, I would ha probably have to cut that by at least a third. Also, this question is for um, the city or Jamie Ray about uh, some of the other things the Scots have done in the area, both in Girls Point and Detroit. Can you li list a couple of the things they have done uh, with their uh, philanthropy? And has there been any remorse about the projects they have done? I thank you. I can answer that in regard to the commitment from the Scott family. Uh, they have uh, committed one of the uh, initial gifts to the Grand Bargain, uh, DIA, a $5 million contribution, which was instrumental in that process. Uh, they have, like I've stated, uh, the commitment to scholarship programs through the Merit Academy. They have contributed to the tot lot at Ellsworthy, uh, Trombley School um, renovations, uh, the trolley, the list goes on, the uh, Carol Scott Theater. And um, I, I know that there are many, many more uh, that I'm certain that I am missing, but as far as local contributions, uh, they are very proud to be members of this community and uh, their enthusiasm is very strong at this point. Uh, and we hope that it remains that because we are very fortunate as a community to have such philanthropic members in our community. And that includes the Manugians who are uh, committed to this project as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next question or comment, please. Um, username is Jeff iPad. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, please, and state your full name and city of residence, and please go ahead. I'm Jeffrey Evangelist. I live in Gross Point Park on Buckingham. Um, I just have a couple of questions about the time frame. Uh, I've been a resident since 2007, and this discussion has been happening since about 2008 that the Performing Arts Center would be here. That's been 12, 13 years. And so how long is the commitment to raise the additional revenue from 16 to 25 million? What is the reasonable time frame that we would allow? 
or that the city would allow? Is it two years? Is it another 13? I'm just curious. I love what the scops have done for us so far, and I'm positive that they'll get it done. But I'm just curious as to how long that time frame is. I heard earlier that there's a legal portion of this in the purchase agreement. Well, I'll go ahead and answer. The goal, is, the goal is to raise the funds uh, by ground before uh, spring with an anticipated uh, groundbreaking in the spring of 2021. Okay. I can uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the time frame uh, leading up to more recent events. Uh, as, you, uh, as you mentioned, um, this project has been out there uh, under potential development for, for many, many years. Uh, so what about, it took so long to get to this point, how do we know it's not gonna take longer? What most of the time was uh, in, uh, taken up at, with um, uh, up to uh, more recent times was uh, land assembly. Um, the, uh, they needed a, this, the uh, Urban Renewal uh, Initiative Foundation uh, per, was pursuing uh, enough uh, property to be able to do uh, the project in its entirety. And this included uh, parcel was owned by the city of Detroit, the former bus return around and a parcel that uh, was owned by a private individual, the small office building. So the, uh, the land assembly actually was taking uh, uh, longer than uh, most of the uh, rest of the steps. Thank you. Yeah, thank Just you. Following, uh, next, following up. Oh, oh, go oh, ahead, oh, sorry. sorry. I was gonna follow You're, up with that. Is it, um, in, in the purchase agreement, is it, do we have two years, three years? I'm just curious what the usual and customary is. Uh, in, the, in the current purchase agreement, it just states um, when sufficient funding uh, commences. Okay. And they, and they have notified the city. Okay, thank you. Next question or comment, please. Okay, and since I'm down to one more comment, I just want to remind everyone one last time, if you still have not had an opportunity to ask a question or state a comment, um, please press star nine on your keypad on your cell phone or um, use the raise hand function in the Zoom application and I will add you to the list. Um, the next person in the queue list is Raylan B. If you will please state your full name and city of residency, please go ahead. My name is Vikas Rellin. I'm a council member here in Gross Point Park, and I've been a resident of color in this wonderful city for a long time. Uh, I want to thank you, Nick. Uh, I know it was tough to do this today. Um, I wish it was under better circumstances, but I do appreciate you following through. Uh, Jamie Ray, I want to thank you as well. I do want to mention you have never made a presentation to our residents. You made many presentations, but this town hall, there was no presentation yesterday or today. So our residents don't know what the presentation is. Um, I also want to thank those that spoke tonight. Um, the resident engagement is something we've been really looking forward to. And I want to thank the more than 40 people that talked yesterday. Um, the residents that spoke yesterday, more than 35 of those questions were about the viability and the lack of transparency on this. Um, so that should open some eyes up to what, to what we've all been pushing. Um, everyone would really, really love a true community arts center. And we're so thankful for the donors to bring this possible project forward. Uh, please don't get that wrong. We all want to see a true community arts center. I think that's what we're worried about. It's not fully resident focused. Um, to, to add some details before Trombley was to be a donor funded ECC, a early childhood center, but the donors had to pull out due to COVID. So that should alert us that possible donors won't be donating for this fundraising. Um, as the mayor said earlier, the URF has owned the land since 2012 and have left it dormant. And let, I just want everyone to understand that, that this land is gonna be developed finally, but it's been left dormant by the people that are doing the development. Um, Mayor, we know you were on the board of the URIF July 8th, 2019. Uh, and from the public minutes, you brought forth the MOU for Detroit to sell an essential plot to the URIF, where GPP in return would pay for a bus turnaround with our funds. And also we agreed to open up Kirchville again with our GPP funds for Detroit. We got nothing in return for this. Many, many, uh, a council member and many residents had numerous questions, and so did I, but yet you pushed on that day, July 8th, 2019. Uh, council member and residents also asked many, many more questions that could not be answered and requests for info that could not be shared. 
and yet you pushed on. There were only half of council members present that night, and yet you pushed on. You stated time is of the essence. That was over 400 days ago. You just stated to the wonderful Wendy Ward that the city of Detroit was presented drawings and plans to approve the very next day, but the council wasn't given those for their vote on this essential rushed MOU. Again, where only half of the council was present. I have never seen half of the council not there. Time is of the essence you mentioned. My question is, did you vote that night on this MOU and do you feel that was a conflict of interest? If I could go ahead. I'll go and, ahead. Uh, Nick, I'll let you answer the question, but I wanna clarify a few uh, points that have just been made in regard to public forum to our residents. The um, notice and invitation to the two Chamber of Commerce sessions were published in the Gross Point News. Uh, there were uh, several members of city council that and planning commission that were on that uh, both calls. And then there are obviously many residents that were um, in attendance at the city council presentation that I gave. And I believe several of the other um, Gross Point Theater, you were on the call. And so that's not Gross Point Park though. I, want, I was talking specifically of presentation for Gross Point Park residents. So the, the Gross the Point group. Park Council meeting was that it was added to the agenda the weekend before. So that's not a lot of, uh, so many people would love to see the presentation. It was such a great presentation. Everyone would love to see it. But I think it's false to say that you presented it to our residents that are paying for this. That's so that was my only point. I did present it at the city council. Exactly. Uh, but that was not given multiple, that was put on the agenda after the agenda was sent out. I would be happy to present to the residents at any forum at any time. If you'd like to lead that discussion, I welcome. I would love to. Thank you so much, Amy. I mean, it's so important to present what's actually happening with your programming and all that, that it's, it's a very valuable presentation. I know the residents would love to see it dedicated to the residents that are actually paying for this project. No other gross point parts are, well, no other gross points are playing, paying for this or adding any kind of funding. We've already lost a lot of money on the land transfers over 1.8 million, which we talked about yesterday. Um, so I, I would really appreciate that presentation. And I'll, I'll reach out to you again to talk about that. And I really thank you for your time today. Um, I know that it's hard coming into a project June 1st when this project's been going for eight years. It gives you the ability to not have answers for a lot of our questions. And unfortunately the URIF did not have a representative that has been on since that time to really give answers as we saw yesterday. A lot of the questions were, I don't know about that, which isn't your fault which is the, 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 the URI. And again, we're thankful for the donors, but the lack of transparency is something that really pains me. So back to my question for the mayor, did you vote that night on that MOU? And do you feel that was a conflict of interest being on the board of the URIF at that time? I, uh, council member, if, if I could just address that, because I, I think there's a legal element. To that I'm asking for the, the mayor's- I'm sorry, could you please not interrupt me? Um, I, I if you could let me finish and then you, you please spoke please I'm sorry thank you that's all it, so I think there's a legal element to that question and you can direct it to the mayor and, and he can respond as he sees fit but to the extent that raises a legal question of whether or not there was a conflict of interest I think that issue has been looked at it was looked at and you know depending on I guess your definition of conflict of interest it's not a conflict of interest that I think everybody is trying to make that um, sound like it was. It, you know, we've, we've made progress with our new um, ordinance that deals with um, ethics and conflicts and things like that. Um, none of that was in place back then. So it's a fair question and, and he can respond for himself. But my only concern was to the extent that's raising a legal issue that I think calls into question City legal matters. I wanted to respond to it that I, I do think that's been looked at. It's been asked, and I, from a legal perspective, it is not a conflict of interest. Again, from a legal perspective, so I, I didn't mean to, to to jump on your toes or try to answer for anybody, but because it raises in my mind uh, an implication of you know potential city liability, I wanted to address it. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Jake. Thank, you. thank you. Thank uh, you. I Thank didn't you. mean for it to be illegal. I wanted to see if it was an ethical conflict of interest. And I want, I was hoping the mayor could answer that. I understand where you're coming from, Jake, and I really appreciate that. 
but no, I was hoping for I, I didn't mean oh. to, like I said, I'm not trying to jump on your toes. On no, that. no, we're good. We're good. Okay. okay. Uh, first of all, I'm, thank you, uh, city attorney. Uh, conflict of interest, in my understanding, is, is, a, legal, uh, is a legal concept. But the, uh, my vote is, uh, is a matter of record. Um, and I'm sure as a matter of record, uh, I did vote for that. Um, and I also would have to say that uh, as a, uh, a sworn uh, public official, um, I was acting um, consistent with my understanding and my responsibilities to act in the best interests of my, uh, of my residents uh, who placed me in office. And that's, uh, and that's my comment. Thank you. So you didn't see a conflict of interest is what you're saying? Uh, council member, it's not, it's not a debate. Uh, you've heard my answer. Thank you. I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, question, comment, Leah? Um, yes, yeah, so the next person in the queue is Sarah Boyd. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. And if you can please state your full name and city of residence, go ahead. Good evening, my name is Sarah Boyd. I live in Gross Point Park. I am a lifelong resident and I've been a homeowner since 2007. Currently, I'm quite affected by the traffic on Maryland. I live at 1015 Maryland, directly across from the city building and directly across from St. Ambrose. What I'm extremely concerned about is that there has not been a parking study or a traffic study involving the congestion in this corner. And I'm wondering, is that going to be done? Um, you can correct me if it has been done, but to my knowledge that has not been examined. And we currently have city buses from the city of Detroit, DDOT buses, coming down Hampton. Now this has been looked at by the council. It was quite a problem two years ago. It has definitely been met almost minimized. However, we still have several DDOT buses sitting on Maryland near Jefferson, which would directly be next to the Future Art Center. And in addition to the congestion from the DDOT buses, we're all of a sudden getting, uh, planning to add parking on our city streets. Many of our residents on Maryland do not have driveways. I do not have a driveway. And uh, the parking map I saw listed 15 spots on Hampton. Hampton is the small street right in front of St. Ambrose. And pre-pandemic, that, that street is used for church functions, parking for weddings, for mass, all week long, as well as residents parking there. So my main question is, has a parking study and traffic study been conducted? Will it be conducted? And second question, how is the planning commission and the council going to move forward having heard from residents tonight and last night what has this affected what are you going to do differently to get on the call last uh, night sorry i tried no, to get on the call last night just so you know so in case you're wondering was it effective to have this call tonight it absolutely was and we should have had more notice thank you uh, th thank you, Sarah. So I'll speak on behalf of the city and then I'll turn over to Jamie Ray. Um, upon, there, there were some presentations uh, presented by the SCAP team uh, that certainly had, I believe it was close to about 600 available parking spaces uh, within the city, which did include a lot of residential areas um, and specifically in your corner, I think it was in relation right to there. Uh, that was an extreme concern of ourselves in, um, in the building department. Uh, so we did have discussions with the SCAP Center team that, you know, we'd like for them to reduce that parking and look um, at the matters uh, of those residents and try and mitigate since parking is a challenge and especially in a congested area like that. And then I'll turn the rest to Jamie Ray. Will anything be done about the DDOT buses, however, the buses that are still using Maryland? Uh, so we'll have, to, we'll have to have a discussion with the DDOT. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's an extreme, yep. extreme clogging congestion. Thank you. And You're just welcome. to follow up on Nick's comment in regard to feedback in regard to parking, uh, that is a great example of the feedback that we received on many of these presentations that the SCAP Center has made. 
and parking was definitely one of the hot topics and taken very seriously in our discussions with the city and revisions to the plan. Thank you. Um, so we're approaching nine o'clock here. Um, we did have the, we said we, this meeting would be about seven to nine. Uh, Leah, do we have any other uh, questions or comments from the public? Um, yes, I have one more new comment in the queue and I don't have any additional second or third comments. Um, the screen name is H. Wilberger. I am going to ask you to unmute yourself, please. Hi, thank and you. And if you can, yes, um, please state your name and your city of residence and go ahead. Uh, Heather Wilberger, 1000 block of Balfour, Gross Point Park. So there have been several questions tonight about the rush to move the Art Center forward during a pandemic, presumably before the incumbents are up for re-election. And I get it. I mean, as I stated, as many have stated, this is a passion project for many. Projects taken nearly 10 years. Someone stated tonight that this Art Center would help drive business to our many small businesses in Gross Point which is super problematic if we don't have small businesses to support. This pandemic is shuttering small businesses nationally. Spend 30 seconds on Google and you will see everyone from The Economist to NPR, The Wall Street Journal, New York Times are all reporting on the devastating effects COVID's having on small businesses. I need help understanding why we aren't rushing to focus our support on our small businesses that are the very fabric of this community. Many of, this, many of these businesses are owned, operated, and staffed by our neighbors. And it's a really lovely idea to have an art center, but the opportunity costs associated with the art center should not be at the expense of these small businesses. Earlier tonight, one of our council members provided a comment that $10,000 was earmarked to help these small businesses, and we haven't done anything yet. The impact of COVID is predicted to have on our economy is staggering, and the whispers of a long-term recession are absolutely becoming real. So I have two questions. Why are we not focusing on helping our small business owners weather COVID, something that will more than likely drag on through 2021 if we're lucky? And two, does the pro forma operating plans, business plans, et cetera, include adjustments to account for the impacts COVID will have on our tax base and the overall financial performance of the Art Center? Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you. So I'll answer on behalf of the city and turn over to Jamie Ray for the second part. Uh, so we are looking to have a DDA meeting soon uh, with that COVID-19 support program similar to the TIFA and I'll elaborate on the TIFA program as well. Uh, at this time, I believe we've had uh, close to six, seven businesses that have applied for that support. Uh, in that support that's helped to purchase uh, things like tables and chairs, uh, plexiglass and other circumstances. Uh, as well, the city council recently passed at a meeting, a social district, which I'm pretty excited to say uh, we are one of four in the state of Michigan that passed the social district. Uh, we just received that approval from the state of Michigan, which now requires us to move forward at a future city council meeting, listing those businesses that can be part of a social district. And we're looking into the process of updating signage, um, you know, for, you know, people to have a safe and fun experience. And that's certainly something we wanted to do to uh, help our residents out. Uh, and I'll turn over the rest to Jamie. I'll state again uh, that the construction uh, team that is going to be assembled, uh, consultants, engineers, building trades, it is all going to generate uh, income and business. And in addition to local uh, companies that are bidding on a marketing uh, RFP for the SCAP Center, the list goes on. There will be uh, new hires to run and operate the SCAP Center. And uh, so I think that there is definitely consideration taken into how this will help with uh, jobs creation. Yeah, I guess my concern isn't really about job creation. It's about the overall impact on the economy and what that does for financial performance for the actual art center. If people don't have money, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to attend, you know, these wonderful programs that we've talked about tonight. And so I have, I have real concern there. And with the background in construction and development, real estate and technology, I just, I, I find a lot of concern about the lack of transparency with, with understanding what the pro formas and the financial statements look like. And then you layer in COVID and I just, it just feels like a vortex of non-information. 
So our anchor organization, the Gross Point Theater, has weathered 72 years of economic turbulence and has had uh, its share of uh, recessions and has still uh, been going strong and has been going strong with the commitment of their donors uh, through this time. And we anticipate that that is only going to be stronger in the future. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball of how this is going to look and how everything is going to turn out when this pandemic is going to end or when a vaccine is going to be uh, created. But we all know that we're working toward a common goal of bringing the arts to this community in a meaningful way. And I think that we've demonstrated the openness to collaborate and uh, communicate. And hopefully this is just the beginning of many more discussions. Thank you. Uh, I do see in the queue, we have one last, uh, and this will be our final comment of the night. Um, Leah, I'll let you take over. Um, Sarah Boyd, you are back up on the top of my queue list. Um, I'm not going to make you restate your full name or your city of residence because you spoke um, not that long ago, but if you would like to go ahead with your second comment, please. Thank you, I appreciate that. I appreciate what I heard was that people are definitely concerned and hear my concern about the parking congestion, but my question was, will a parking study be conducted, a parking and or traffic study? Uh, so that would be something that would have to be determined further uh, by the Planning Commission. And I know the Planning Commission is meeting tomorrow night. Will that be discussed tomorrow night? Uh, I'm certainly sure that there could be a possibility that that is discussed and or brought up. Okay, and then my other question was not really answered or not answered when I first spoke, which was how have these town halls impacted the Planning Commission and the URF and the council members? What are you going to do dif differently moving forward with all of this feedback? So I'll state from these exact forms, so the one we had yesterday and today, uh, it actually has created, um, you know, helped me provide more transparency in uh, searching through city archives and looking at the past uh, of what has been done and how we conducted business. And what we've done from this is provided more FAQs uh, into our SCAP Center development. Uh, and so that's been one of the uh, best things with this process. Uh, there's been a lot of great feedback um, and our questions and or uh, why has this been done. And I know, for instance, we've had several uh, other members of city council and planning commission that are certainly, you know, that are part of these processes listening to this. And they're certainly going to be asking, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, further questions, uh, you know, to the city and or the SCAP Center team. Okay, so, so if anything, I, I think these two, oh, sorry. I'm just wondering what is changing based on the feedback? What is changing? I know the FAQs have been put together and you've heard us, but what is changing? You're speaking tomorrow night, so. Yeah, I guess we'll see, yeah, tomorrow night, I, I would say. Uh, Jamie Ray, any other open, last comments? No, I just want to continue uh, to, sh to share my contact information, jrt at jrturnbull.com. I know that many of you uh, that have reached out, uh, that I've answered questions, some of you prefer to have a public forum to receive those answers, but I am always available and um, willing to answer any questions, collaborate, and uh, look forward to that continued dialogue. Thank you. Uh, thank you again to everybody that attended tonight. I uh, greatly appreciate the feedback and I know the SCAP Center team did as well. Uh, tomorrow we are having a planning commission meeting via Zoom. Uh, that'll be at 7 p.m. Um, as we have on the screen here. Uh, it's posted on the city's website, Facebook and um, uh, email. And we'll be sharing those again as well to the public. Thank you everybody and have a great night.